Thanks for waking up with us. How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stay in Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ as always. Man-monkey hybrid sparks fears of Frankenstein creatures. This is from the Washington Times. I'm going to uh, start time stamping my, uh, my video. So today is Saturday, June 5th. 2021 uh, the reason for that is because sometimes i don't get videos uploaded as fast as i as i should and i forget about it <laughs> or i get sidetracked with some other videos and then i will have sermons that i've done from like years ago um and then i try to upload them and stuff like that and they're kind of like irrelevant but then the stuff i'm speaking about in the video ends up being relevant later so, um, yeah, but you know, we've been talking about this stuff right here for a while. And I mentioned before that they were going to publicly start coming out with more and more of this stuff. You were going to start seeing and hearing more and more about these type of things, which that's not too hard to figure out. But for most people, it is because we are dealing with spiritual things. We are dealing with spiritual things because even when you show people these things and tell people these things, it's like they still don't get it. So, this is not just something that they are um, talking about. This is something that's actually going on. Researchers conducting human-animal hybrid experiments struck fear into federal lawmakers worried that nightmare scenarios of Frankenstein creatures have become a reality. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can read, you can tell from the article that what they're saying in an article isn't everything that they told the people. So they're holding things back. What they said in an article isn't everything that they told the, uh, the federal lawmakers about these nightmare scenarios of Frankenstein creatures. So it goes on and says earlier this year, researchers announced a blending of man and monkey. So this isn't just talk people. They're doing this. Shout out to uh, our sister in Christ who shared this article on her page, Sister uh, Sister Liz. The Salk Institute for Biological Studies in La Jolla, California said in April that it participated with a China-led research team in an experiment by injecting human stem cells into monkey embryos. And it's interesting that America is in bed with China with this, but America says that it's not in bed with China when it comes to the you-know-what. <laughs> Come on now. They are all in cahoots together. Um, we knew it, and now you know it's coming out, Dr. Fauci, with his emails and stuff like that. Stuff that we already, um, you know, already knew, right? So, I showed you before, and some of you have seen it on other people's videos, that the current you know what they modified it and there is a patent on it there's a patent on it they modified it from the human from you know i don't like to use the word humans but bear with me from mankind they took something from mankind and then they mod they modified you know what and that's according to the patent that they that they have on the current one so again, they injected human stem cells into monkey embryos. This is crazy. 
they allowed the resulting creature to live and grow for 19 days before terminating it, allegedly. The researchers responsible for the technology used in the experiment said their work aided the study of embryonic development. Right. Um, so maybe they, they terminated this one, but we know, we know, we know, we know, we know. <laughs> Federal officials have placed a moratorium on U.S. funding of such research. Still, they are reviewing the restrictions in scientific developments as Congress debates a bill to spend nearly $200 billion of taxpayers' money on research and development endeavors to counter China. Senator Mike Braun, Indiana Republican, said he is worried that such human-animal hybrid experiments will cross ethical boundaries and contravene the dignity and sancti sanctity of human life. <clears throat> I mean, any of us could speculate on kind of the Frankenstein concept, let's put it that way, which that was being referred to as in terms of what this leads to, Mr. Braun said. I don't know. I think that I do believe that there is a genuine interest in taking so much that we learn through DNA analysis, understanding the genome of not only human beings, but other animals. This is how this is how they were able to do that by you know what I'm saying going into the DNA understanding it and thus being able to manipulate it that there's going to be that temptation or contagion to go beyond maybe just the um a true a true a truistic effort of finding cures for very very vexing ailments like ALS like Alzheimer's like any of the diseases that are out there that are significant, that we're not even to the point where we know exactly what causes it, let alone cures. Mr. Braun and fellow Republicans seek to outlaw chimeras involving the blending of human embryos with animal wombs and animal embryos with human wombs. This is a time period that we're living in. And it's only going to get worse. And which is why um, when they voted against it, um, the people supported it. They lost. Because ultimately the word of God is going to be fulfilled. Now that a chimera is no longer an ancient mythological creature, having parts of a lion, goat, and serpent, but an actual human-animal hybrid. So it said, hey, it's not just something that we think about as myth, myth, uh, mythology. And we're going to look at mythology and see what the actual definition of mythology because like I told you, we've been... Uh, programmed to think certain things when pope when people um hear the word myth the first thing that most that pops in most people's mind is something that's not true something that's a lie something that's made up but when you actually look at the definition of mythology then you see what's really going on so why is that why when you say oh it's a myth why do people automatically think that you're telling a lie something that's not true they get defensive about it like oh man come on like for real for real so again they're telling you that hey this isn't just you know what I'm saying the old stories of the you know ancient gods and these creatures this is real they're making a comparison to these ancient chimeras to these modern day human animal hybrid chimeras because that's what the ancient chimeras were Republican lawmakers want to establish baselines for American research rooted in a belief in the dignity of human life. Mr. Braun and, um, what's that stand for? It's not Senator, is it? Uh, James Lankford of Oklahoma and Steve Daines of Montana sought to amend the Senate's, I guess it is Senator, Senate, Massive Research and Development Spending Bill last week to block certain human animal Chimeras, but the amendment, what well, it failed by an, by a 48 to 49 vote along party lines. Three senators did not vote. Two absent Republicans, senators, yeah, senators Marshall, Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee and Tom Tillis of North Carolina could not have changed the outcome, Mr. Braun said. Senate Majority Leader Charles E. Schumer, New York Democrat, would have blocked a vote on the amendment or ensure that Senator Joe 
Mackin, Ma Ma Mason, Mansion, the third of West Virginia, who also did not vote, would have joined the rest of the Democratic caucus, he said. Mr. Langford said he thought blocking human animal blending ought to have passed by a vo voice vote and was shocked to find Democratic opposition. See, somebody said, oh, see the Democrats, Democrats. Come on, man, like for real? You still on that? So he was like, you know, you would think something like this would be easily, uh, you know, blocked. But we don't want to mix human animal blending to give us time to, you know, come up with a better solution or at least get some laws in place. But it didn't happen that way. So somebody got to these people. And I wouldn't be surprised if these people, they're not really what we call people, but literal um, tears in this flesh, as the um, scriptures tell us. We thought it was important to be able to put a stake in the ground and say, no, the United States does not believe it is right to be able to do blending of animals and humans for experimentation or to try to develop that and ultimately as China's on a path to be able to do to try to watch this to implant and grow to a child which they're already doing it said Mr. Langford that's an entirely different direction well that's ignorance on his part it's actually stupidity to think that America uh, wouldn't wouldn't support this America supports this 100% America's been doing it Mr. Braun, Mr. Langford, five other senators, and 25 House members led by Representative Chris Smith, New Jersey Republican, wrote to the National Institutes of Health last week to raise concerns on the Chimera research and request details about any ethical analysis the federal agency is pursuing. The NIH did not respond to the lawmakers, but has sponsored a review of ethical questions involving human animal chimeras are not going to really respond because they're already doing it. They're in bed with it. The NIH and the Dana Foundation funded a study published in April by an ad, ad hoc committee of the National Academic Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine to examine the ethical, regulatory, and scientific issues associated with neural chimeras and neural organoid research. The ad hoc committee included a member from the Salk Institute, and we have mentioned the Salk Institute many times um, before in the past, which participated in the human animal hybrid experiment. Another Salk Institute researcher oversaw the study. I would love to watch that video because I'm pretty sure they recorded it. The report concluded that human animal hybrid experimentation held potential benefits. But researchers should use words that do not attract the general public's attention. Hey, don't bring attention to this. That's what they don't want to do. It's too late, though. It's too late because that's what it is. The term chimera is used because it is scientifically accurate. So we're talking about chimeras. They're saying, hey, this is the right term we need to be using because scientifically this lines up with what this is. And the committee believes that its connection with the monsters of ancient myths is too remote to warrant avoiding its use. So they're saying that what we're doing today is directly connected to the ancient monsters. So they're telling you that this uh, human monkey Chimera is a monster. Is a monster that you can say you could take what they're doing and put it in ancient mythology and it would match up perfectly with what they did. And you could take what they did in the past and put it in the future. Well, what we're doing today as in regards to mankind. And it, would, it wouldn't make no difference. So why is all this important? Well, because of what the scriptures tell us. Um, so it goes on and says, said the report titled Emerging Field of Human Neural Organoids, Transplants and Chimeras. So a good thing to do would be to copy this and then, you know, you do your own research and read the article or the report. Science, Ethics, and Governance. Research scientists and their institutional representatives can be cautioned to avoid terminology that may court attention but does 
their work a disservice by stimulating concerns that go far beyond the current state of science. NIH did not answer the Washington Times question about the study is sponsored, but an NIH spokesperson noted in an email the moratorium on federal funding involving Chimera research. So, um, the report avoided making recommendations but listed findings of potential benefits of Chimera research to include knowledge of brain diseases that have potential application in the treatments of Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, psychiatric diseases, and other ailments. So, hey, we want to do this because it can help us today figuring things out. So we want to put the brain of a, of a, you know, a man or a woman in a monkey so we can study the brain and then come up with cures for our own people. Real smart. The report said some studies of human animal hybrid experimentation surrounding the brain involving neurochimeras created concerns about animals acquiring attributes that could be viewed as distinctly human or humans taking on roles that should be reserved for a deity. Pretty much playing the role of God. Or these animals, you know, rise to the planet of the apes. They tell you all this stuff in the movies and you just think it's a movie. Republican lawmakers who are worried about human-animal hybrids say scientists should not play God, which is exactly what they're doing. Mr. Lankford said scientific experimentation on animals is one matter, but attempting to create new forms of life goes too far. Well, you shouldn't be experimenting on animals and then using the experiments and the data that you get, or excuse me, the data that you get from experimenting on animals to be used in mankind. That's stupid too. There's a real difference in taking human cells and injecting them into a mouse for cancer research and for other research. No, there's really no difference. That's been done and it's been done for a very long time. And one day they will say, hey, what we've been doing with these chimeras has been done for a long time. So, and we've had time to, to be able to process that, said Mr. Langford. But trying to be able to create life is a very different threshold for me. So, you know, that's his opinion based on his, um, you know, his beliefs, his views and everything. I don't necessarily agree with that. I believe it's all wrong. I don't believe that you that they should be experimenting on animals and then using that data to create, you know, drugs and vaccines, you know, saying for us. I don't agree with that. Cause I'm not an animal. But hey, most people are, which is why they allow that type of stuff to happen and then they take that stuff and then wonder why people are the way that they are. Spending all this money on healthcare, but the results are like we live in a third world country. So, um, yeah, they ain't talking about too much else. It's talking about what they are doing and whatnot. So let's jump over here and we're going to look at, uh, stem cells real quick. So it says, what are stem cells? Stem cells are special human cells that, are able to develop into many different cell types because this is what they're using, right? This can range from muscle cells to brain cells. In some cases, they can also fix damaged tissue. Researchers believe that stem cell-based therapies may one day be used to treat serious illnesses such as paralysis and Alzheimer's disease. So the types of stem cells. Stem cells are divided into two main forms. They are embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Huh, I wonder where embryonic stem cells come from. Not too hard to figure out. Embryonic stem cells, the embryonic stem cells used in research today, come from unused embryos, allegedly. From the abortions and your Planned Parenthood, all these different things. And who are most of these abortions coming from? Who has the most abortions, you know, pretty much you can say ever? black people so they're using the black aborted babies primarily i'm not saying they're not using other uh what we call races you know the white race or or whatnot I'm not saying they're not using them but primarily most of the uh embryos that they use for this research that they use to come up with these uh human animal hybrids 
Uh, some of you know about Planet of the Apes and what they were really, really portraying, which is interesting if you think about it when you make that connection. Um, these embryonic stem cells are primarily coming from black people, which I told y'all, chemistry, which is what this is, the study of melanin, the study of the flesh, because that's what they're doing, they're manipulating the flesh. And the reason that they're using, they like to use the embryos is because the embryos are more pure. They're more pure. They're not, um, you know, tainted. Um, you know, like ours is. These result from an in vitro fertilization procedure, which is, you know, why I don't agree with that stuff. There's many other reasons. They are donated to science, allegedly. What do you mean by donated? Are they donated by, um, you know, uh, abortion? Because that could be technically uh, said to be a donation. But we already know. These embryonic stem cells are pluripotent. This means that they can turn into more than one type of cell. They also have adult stem cells. There are two types of adult stem cells. One type comes from fully developed tissue, such as the brain, skin, and bone marrow. We have discussed that before. They are on, there, there are only small numbers of stem cells in these tissues. They are more likely to generate only certain types of cells. For example, a stem cell that comes from the liver will only make more liver cells. The second type is induced pluripotent stem cells. These are adult stem cells that have been changed <laughs> in a lab to be more like embryonic stem cells. And y'all be sitting there giving your blood and all this other stuff. You be donating your body to science. As the scriptures call it, science so falsely called. And they're harvesting these organs. They're harvesting these different body parts of your loved ones. And then, you know, put them in the ground, ain't nothing there. You're thinking that everything is, is there. No, nah. no. Nah. It's a big, it's a big black market with, uh, you know, body parts and, you know, organs and everything. Um, and that's a whole study in itself. So, again, what are they doing? They're taking these uh, stem cells, these adult stem cells, and they are changing them in the lab. They are modifying them. Scientists first reported that human stem cells could be changed in this way in 2006. So, technology uh, multiplies exponentially over every year. So from 2006 to right now, we know what pro type of progress they've made. More progress than what they're telling the people publicly. Induced pluripotent stem cells do not seem to be different from embryonic stem cells. But scientists have not yet found one that can develop every kind of cell and tissue. The only stem cells now used to treat disease are hemiotobacillus. Don't know how to pronounce it, so we're going to skip it. Stem cells. These are the blood cell forming adult stem cells found in bone marrow, which is, again, something that we have discussed many times. Every type of bone, excuse me, blood cell in the bone marrow starts as a what? As a stem cell. That's why God took the rib. Stem cells, and also because what the rib means, it means covering, you know, because man is the covering of the woman and God is the covering of man. Stem cells are immature cells that are able to make other blood cells that mature and function as needed. So uh, just to give you a little bit of research um, or backdrop on this so you can understand a little bit more what we're dealing with. And we go over here to uh, embryo, and it tells us because they're using embryonic stem cells, right? Just to prove the point, embryo, fetus, and utero at an early stage of development. A young one, or it could be a young animal. Fruit of the womb. And the Bible says something about the fruit of the womb. So y'all saying this ain't a child because it's not fully developed. 
I got children in me right now. And my sperm. Those are children. So it goes and says, that which grows to swell, to be full, right? So we go over here, we look at fetus, the young while in the womb or egg, tending to mean vaguely the embryo in the later stage of development. The bearing or hatching of young, a bringing forth, pregnancy, childbearing, offspring, the root of it is to suck, one that sucks, because we know what a child does. They come out, and they get the milk from the mother's breast. That's the way it's supposed to be. So, uh, offspring, a fruit, produce, shoot, growth, production. All right? Let's see if it tells us anything uh, else of use. As we, again, we see the root of it is to suck. You see, it forms what word? It forms effeminate. So when you're talking about a effeminate man, you're talking about a man that is you can pretty much say is you still you still he's still on his um, mother's breast, which is nasty because that's some sexual perversion going on. Because we know a man is not supposed to be a, a grown man being effeminate. Still sucking his mama titty. If you seen a grown man sucking his mama titty, you be like, uh, what's going on here? But that's the mindset of of most men, because they still they say they stay stuck in that when they're supposed to grow into who they're supposed to be. And I found this interesting when you look at this word. It talks about fetus and it means to suck. And one of them uh, in Irish is lamb, is lamb. Find it very, very interesting. And you should uh, figure that out. Why? So we go over here to myth. Because I mentioned it earlier. And I'm going to show you the definition of myth. So it says speech, thought, word, Discourse, conversation, story, saga, tale, anything delivered by word of mouth. In the same way, what do we do? We, we preach. We give a discourse. Matter of fact, we'll look at this in a, in a second. Let me copy it. Myths are stories about divine beings. Generally arranged in a coherent system. They are revered as true and sacred. So, they, oh, they, that's a myth. They're saying that's a myth. It deals with, you know what I'm saying, the divine. I don't deal with all, dealing all that, but then that's what the very thing they're dealing with. So, myth doesn't, doesn't mean what you've been programmed to think it means. They are endorsed by what? By rulers and priests. So the rulers of the day, of that time period, they endorse, the, they endorse these myths. Which I tell you is not true. And closely linked to religion. Ah, that's the problem. That's, that's the problem. Because when you start dealing with religion and everything, then you start dealing with what's right, what's wrong, all these different things of whatever. And ultimately leads back to Christ. Because Christ is going to be brought up in everything. Especially when it comes to religion. And we know what the scriptures say about religion. God isn't against religion uh, holy. God is against um, unpure religion. But God is for pure and undefiled religion as the scriptures tell us. So it goes on and says, once this link is broken and the actors in the story are not regarded as gods, but as human heroes, giants, or fairies, it is no longer a myth, but a folk tale. Where the central actor is divine, but the story is trivial. The result is religious legend, not myth. So a general sense of untrue story, rumor, imaginary, 
or fictitious object or individual. So it was later made this. Later it was made this, but that's not what it is historically. Because we know that myths, these so-called myths, they call them myths, they are true. They're true. So, uh, I think it was telling us the same thing. Yeah. Let's go over here real fast and let's um, type in that word or paste it and see what it tells us. A discourse, process of understanding, reasoning, thought. So they built a system um, with words and everything to relay a story. The Bible does the same thing. They built the system with these creatures and everything, which the creatures are real, to, to, to relate a story, but a deeper story. So, says a running about, again, conversation, reasoning. Right? I think if we go over here to preach, if I'm not mistaken, um, I don't see it in here, but I, I forgot the connection, but I know one of these words that deals with preaching it talks about giving a discourse. Matter of fact, it may be a sermon. It may be a sermon. Yeah, there you go. Sermon, a discourse upon a text of scripture. So I just wanted you to see that. So we go over here to the scriptures. And we go to Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So what they're doing is only the beginning. We know what was going on in the days of Noah. They were manipulating everything. We know that they had dinosaurs. A lot of your, you know what I'm saying, your, um, the crazy dinosaurs, your, um, um, like your T-Rex and stuff like that. I believe they were hybrids. I believe a lot of those dinosaurs, the ones that were uh, just terrible, the terrible, they were hybrids. Maybe the T-Rex wasn't originally like that. Maybe the T-Rex is just, um, you know, a dinosaur that was mutated with another dinosaur to become what we know as a T-Rex today with a little itty bitty short arms. <laughs> so we'll go over to Job 22. It says, Has thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time? whose foundation was over, overflown with the flood, was said unto God, depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? So this is what happened. This is why God flooded them. They didn't care. They said they told God, depart from We don't want nothing to do with you. We don't care about nothing you got to say. We're going to do what we want to, and what can you do for us that we can't do for ourselves? And this is exactly what's going on today. Which is why it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They don't give a dang. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Sound familiar, right? Same thing going on today. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. So for those of you who don't understand, you know, repentance, you're saying that God repented of his sins. He was grieved. He was grieved. So what are we supposed to be grieved of? We're supposed to be grieved um, over what we've done. We're supposed to be grieved over, over our sins. We're supposed to be grieved that we trust in our, in our self-righteousness. You know, grieve in our heart. But the Bible says, you know, you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. Most people simply confess with their mouth, but they don't really believe in their heart because if they believe in their heart, then they will believe the word of God. They would believe the word of God because the word is a seed and the seed is planted in your heart. 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Because everything had become corrupt. Why? Because man's imagination of his heart was only evil continually. He wasn't, you know, doing stuff to do good stuff. Everything was evil. Everything that was being invented back then was some evil invention. The intents were evil. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because his heart was not on evil continually. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in the generations. And Noah walked with God. He was perfect in the generation. He wasn't with all this DNA manipulation stuff. Because the root of generations is gene. The root of generation is gene. In fact, let's... um. Let's get it real fast. Let's see what it tells us. So, body of individuals born about the same period. So, his people, they were not tainted with what was going on. Right? They were not tainted. The sentence at the same stage in the line of descendants. Right? And the root of it is what? Bring forth, begat, produce, race. So a generation can be a race of people, a kind. The root is what? To give birth, beget. So when you're dealing with this right here, and Noah, Noah was a just and perfect in his generations, he wasn't with all this right here. God saw his heart as being right because he was obedient and he was not doing this physical uh, DNA alteration and getting involved in this stuff. Him nor his family. Righteousness. Said, and Noah walk with God. We know what it means to walk with God. Right? You're walking in righteousness. Keeping the commandments, right? And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? With violence. What is the earth filled with today? Everywhere you go is, is some dealing with some violence. It's always something dealing with some some violence. Let's look at the word violence real quick. Matter of fact, we just type it in. Violence. See what it tells us. So it tells us physical force used to inflict injury or damage. Physical force used to inflict injury or damage. Is that is that not what what's going on? You got murders, you got mass murders, you got wars, and all these different things going on. You got they, they purposely coming up with stuff to kill the people. They killing they killing us through everything, through the food, the air, everything. They're trying to kill people. It's violence. And remember what the scripture said. They said they uh the the the, the wicked um they try to take they try to take heaven by violence, right? So they try to take it by physical force. Matter of fact, let's jump over here real quick and let's get that scripture. Take heaven by, I think it says by force. Yeah, Matthew says, I think it says, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffered the violence. Yeah, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force you see what i'm saying they're trying to take it they're trying, they, they're trying to take it by force so you think that god was just going to let them take it like yeah i'm just going to lay down and just you know saying let you take this by force they try to take it by force nimrod and, and all of them they tried to uh take the kingdom of heaven by force not only the kingdom of heaven in regard to the third heaven. remember there's three heavens they try to take all of it. They try to take the third heaven by force. They try to take the second heaven, which is what we call space by force, and the kingdom of heaven, which is also here on earth. Because above you is heaven. We say heaven on earth. Inside what we call the firmament. That's what they took by force. They took this world by force. But that went all the way back to what happened with Adam and Eve. 
And so Christ came back to restore it back and he took it, he took it back. So um, we go on and says, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All the, all the flesh. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. So this includes the animals too. For the earth is filled with violence through them, through the people, because the people end up corrupting their flesh and then corrupting the flesh of the, the birds and, you know, um, 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 the beasts and stuff like that. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Because that's where we came from. That's what they manipulated. They manipulated the earth. The physical. So we go over here and it says, By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear. So by what? By faith. Because God spoke the word to him and told him what he was going to do. So it's always been by faith. And his faith was counted to him for righteousness, imputed to him for righteousness, right? So the same thing for us today. By faith, Brother King, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, I move with fear. Insert your name if you're a true believer. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. What is our house? Our body, the temple. Right? So that we know the ark is Christ. Christ said, he said, save yourself. <laughs> Meaning like you can't help other people if you ain't, if you, ain't, you don't first help yourself. And it goes on and says, by the which he condemned the world. So when you're walking in faith, that is condemning the world. When you, when you have the spirit of God in you and you're preaching the gospel, the things that God warned you about, you moving with fear because you know what God is about to do. That is, that is your, that's the sign that you condemn this world. And because of that, you what you become heirs of the righteousness, which is by faith. So it's always been by faith. The righteousness has always come by faith. But obviously Christ hadn't come, uh, come then to be crucified on the cross. But their faith was still imputed to them for righteousness. Which is why the scriptures tell us that the, uh, the, uh, the prophets of old, they preached the gospel. God gave them the gospel. And they believed and it was imputed to them for righteousness. So you go over here and it says, which sometime were disobedient. When once a long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. So God's long suffering was him not immediately taking them out. But he gave them all these years to, you know, get on board. And they didn't. And that's exactly what's going on now. That's why we're still here. We're still here because God is being long suffering with the disobedient. He being long suffering with the disobedient because they need to long suffering more than we do. Now I'm not saying that God isn't long suffering with us because he, he obviously had to be for us to come to salvation in the first place. But y'all know that we get judged pretty fast when we do something, we ain't got no business in comparison to them. While the ark was a preparing, we're in few that is eight souls were saved by water, which is the same way it is there. You saved by water. Not because you are baptized with literal water by a pastor or whatever, but baptized into the spirit. Remember, um, the disciples asked Jesus how many be saved. How many were there that can be saved? And he, he said, few. And pretty much he said, hey, you need to worry about yourself first and foremost. He was trying to make a point to them. That, that you need to make sure that you get saved. Before you're worried about somebody else. You need to make sure that you're right. Before you're worried about somebody else. You need to make sure that you're in the few. Before you're worried about somebody else. Many are called but few are chosen. So it's always been like that. We see that that continual theme throughout the scriptures. It's always few. The light figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. So uh it's, that was a that was a figure of what was to come, right? Not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by what? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we are baptized with him in his death and then resurrected, coming out of the water, the spirit. If you read the book of Psalms, it describes that. 
You know, it describes, you know, like almost like what Christ went through, like he was like he drowned. And, you know, um, talks about water and everything and how it, you know, it burned and everything. Because water is fire and fire is water for those who didn't know. Go look up the, the structure of water and break it down and you'll see that water is a form of fire. Which is why when you get water in your lungs, it burns. So, a um, little short sermon, not too long, just wanted to share this with y'all. But it's, you know, it's about, it's about the faith, faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, hey, all I can tell you is you better get right. You better make sure you're right. Because when the time period comes, you get stuck here. You're going to be looking like, as we say, boo-boo the fool. You're going to be looking like boo-boo the fool. And the, the sad thing is you're going you're gonna to remember the things that we told you. And the even sadder thing is most people listening to this video right now, they're going to be in that time period because you're not going to make it. So, with that being said, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. And as you know, the truth is not debated, it is declared. But let me add this because I know some of you may say, well, you could be stuck there too. Well, I think if I'm stuck here during that time period, you're not going to be worried about it. I think that if both of us end up being stuck here, you're not going to be like, yeah, I see you're stuck here. I'm like, well, you're stuck here too, dummy. We're both stuck here. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm out. Thanks for waking up with us.